not going to get triggered in this video. I'm not. I've got some things that I've got to get off of my chest today. Now, keep in mind, the things I'm going to talk about today are very much from a dog trainer's perspective. There's a few scenarios that I can think of right now where I have to be borderline rude with people when I'm out and about. And then it leaves me wondering, are they gonna complain about me on the internet and try to get me canceled? The thing is, sometimes it can be hard to advocate for your dog while simultaneously being nice to strangers. The irony is that this video is probably more for people who don't have a dog than who do have a dog. Recently, our dog, Inertia had surgery. Bree and I had talked about it and we decided to wait until she was a bit older to spay her. Due to the research that we've done, we felt better about that. And you know, after your dog goes through a medical event like that, you've got to let them recover. And you know, Inertia was convinced she was fully recovered practically the next day. My dog was spayed six days ago, period. How long until she can play fetch again, question mark? Does anyone else do dictation instead of typing? Fuzzy is a service that we continue to use all of the time. It's like if your best friend was a vet or a vet tech and you could just text them anytime you wanted to. Every time we've done this, less than a minute wait time. And see, that's good. She thought to ask for a picture. I happen to have one right there. Oh, Savannah's typing. That's great. Nice job keeping her from licking the incision. Thank you very much, Savannah. So basically she's saying inertia looks like she's on the tail end of her recovery, but I should probably still work up to fetch at least over, you know, about three more days. And that is why I am a dog trainer and not a vet or a vet tech. Fuzzy's gonna give you seven days of totally unlimited questions, completely free. Go to yourfuzzy.com slash Zach. I think a lot of you guys are going to relate with this. I mean, when you have a cute dog, which dog is not cute, everybody in the world wants to pet them. And look, deep down, honestly, I wanna pet everyone's dog too, I get it. But look, if you're training a dog, it's probably not the best idea to let said dog be pet by anyone who wants to pet them. So in general, when you're outside of the house and family, there are two types of people, seemingly, that want to pet your dog. I mean, there's a type of person who'll see your dog and they just cannot resist asking you to pet your dog. But then there are people who don't ask at all to pet your dog and pet them without asking. And believe it or not, I'm not just talking about toddlers here. Like, grown-ups do this all of the time. All right, but let's talk about the first type first. Like people who come up to you in public and they ask very nicely, can I please pet your dog? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, your dog's amazing. It's nice that other people realize that. But almost all of the time, I'm still going to tell them no. I'm always asking myself, how can I do that without being a jerk? I mean, someone's actually paying you a compliment when they get up the courage enough to ask you if they can pet your dog. I can't tell you how many times that someone's asked this and I've told them, no, not right now, I'm training my dog. Yeah, in training, trying to teach her not to run up to dogs. You can't help but feel like they're somewhat offended by that. Or at least really thrown off because I think the average person would say, yeah, sure, go ahead. Now, I'm not saying you should never ever let anybody pet your dog when you're out in public, but generally, especially if you're training your dog, it's probably not a good idea to let anyone who wants to pet them, pet them. I mean, obviously lots of dogs have different personalities. I mean, maybe your dog is perfectly happy and loves people, but you might risk having them have that excitement and that jumping behavior and that exuberance be reinforced by getting pet by another person and that's not exactly compatible with having a well-behaved dog in public or at the other end of the spectrum maybe your dog's really nervous or doesn't like being approached by strangers that could potentially make a dog really uncomfortable or maybe it just is throwing off your rhythm and training in general who knows but you know look i understand it's a fine line when you're socializing a young puppy too and i believe deeply in socialization with people and strangers but you know there's a time and a place for puppy socialization and when you're out in public training your dog and you don't have any planned socialization events in mind particularly with strangers that's probably not the most ideal situation of course these are just general guidelines there's going to be situations where you decide this is a great opportunity for someone to pet your dog but of course you want to make that decision now let's talk about the second type of person, which is really helping me kind of get at the heart of things that I need to really get off my chest today. The person who comes up to your dog does not ask and puts their hands on them or attempts to. I think most of you watching this video know and understand how inconsiderate that can be. I cannot think of a single scenario where it's okay to go up to somebody's dog when the person is there with them and interact with them 
without permission. I mean, this can go so wrong in so many ways with so many dogs. Even if your dog is a super happy dog who loves to be pet by strangers, you still run the risk of reinforcing them that, hey, there's a stranger. I get to jump on that stranger and get pet. And that is likely to make life difficult for you moving forward. And also, like I said before, there is a time and a place to socialize your dog. But randomly, without a plan, I mean, that's just not it. You guys can help me with this. I mean, what can we do to help generally educate the public to, number one, don't go up to a dog without permission and pet them. And secondly, if someone tells you no when you ask to pet their dog, don't be offended. You know, as a side note, I mean, we've accepted this basic etiquette with service dogs in public for a long time. Most people are supposed to know that you don't go up to a working dog and try to pet them. And if they don't know that, they'll probably be corrected by any service dog handler. But personally, I mean, my feeling is, I think we should extend this courtesy to any dog in public who's being walked or trained or whatever. This next point hits home with me and I think it will with a lot of you as well. When I run into people in public, let's say like a subscriber or something, they usually fall, broadly speaking, into a couple of categories. Sometimes they just wave, say hi, like your videos. Sometimes they want to stop and chat and interact with the dog that I'm working with. And sometimes they want to talk a little bit longer and get a photo, very flattering. And not realizing that most of the time, if I'm working with a dog in public, I really do need to keep like a hundred percent of my attention on the dog that I'm training. I mean, number one, for safety, and secondly, to make sure that my training doesn't go off the rails. And I also wanna make sure that I'm a responsible trainer to the dog that I'm working with, even if I risk coming off a bit rude. I mean, especially if I'm working with a dog that's very delicate or likely to start reacting to something at any moment, I don't really have a lot of time, really at all, to explain to them what I'm doing. And that's because the second your attention is divided, things are likely to deteriorate quickly with the dog that you're training. So, I mean, the dilemma is I always find myself trying to be really nice and polite to the person while also keeping my training on track. And so in my case, I just about always elect to keep my focus on the dog that I'm working with. And even if that means being shorter than I'd like with very friendly people in public. And it's a really good idea to think ahead of time about what you're going to say to people, whether it's a friendly stranger or a neighbor or whoever. In my case, I'll usually say, sorry, I've been training right now. Thanks for asking if I can even get it out. Seriously, in some touchy situations, maybe I can get three words in. What can you say in three words? Not now, bye. Of everyone on the planet, you guys know how dogs can be. So look, if you've got to be short with someone to keep your dog under threshold, don't feel bad about that. I think especially dog lovers will understand. This next one is actually for people who do have dogs. But you know, look, and this one, oh, I'm not going to get triggered in this video. I'm not. Sometimes it's not a person at all that comes up to you. Surely most of us have experienced having an off-leash dog approach us when we're on a walk with our dog. And look, a lot of that's on us. I mean, if you're gonna take your dog to an area where it's either legal and or customary for dogs to be off leash, then you need to take that into account as well. Now, personally, I try to avoid putting myself in situations like that. And in much of the United States, it's not legal to have your dog off leash in many public areas. I actually don't mind seeing other off leash dogs, even if it is technically against the rules. I mean, after all, I've had my dogs off leash plenty over the years years in environments where they weren't supposed to be off leash. But keep in mind, I mean, I spent considerable time training them and effort making sure that they were reliable in an environment like that before doing that. You can see how we did a lot of off-leash training with inertia, but even today, she's just not off-leash willy-nilly anywhere, but only in places where she's reliable. And by reliable, I mean she'll hold a down stay. She'll come to me when I call her and so on, even if she sees another dog. And the thing is, like, if a dog is running up to my dog, that is immediate evidence that they are not reliable and should not be off leash in that situation. I think it must be common for a lot of people to assume that, hey, my dog is so friendly. Even if they run up to someone, they're so non-threatening and they probably just want to say hi. And after all, if someone can't take a nice greeting from a dog, what kind of person are they? I think what we have to remember is that dogs are pretty complex beings. I mean, not every dog is welcoming of a strange dog coming up to them. That really puts other people in a very awkward situation 
situation. It can be really upsetting. I mean, if you've worked with your dog very hard and you're keeping them on leash and you're abiding by the rules and you still have to deal with unplanned or unwanted encounters. It's certainly stressful to the person. It could be very stressful to your dog as well. And obviously it could even be dangerous depending on context. You know, personally, Inertia is the first dog that I've had that really enjoys the company of other dogs. With my first generation of Border Collies, I have a lot of experience of keeping dogs away from my guys. I'm gonna tell you what my protocol is when an off-leash dog approaches me. I'm not saying you should do this, I'm just telling you how I handle it. Number one, I'm gonna make sure my dog is in a down stay, and I will not, in any circumstance that I can think of right now, allow a strange dog that I don't know to interact with my dog spontaneously like that. I mean, I don't care how friendly they look, how sweet they are, I will physically step in and prevent a dog, if necessary, from interacting with my dogs. Now, fortunately, most dogs are pretty good at understanding body language, so a prompt no or ah or whatever is probably something that they've heard before. And usually body language like that from me and being very obvious, I don't want this dog near my dogs, really clues the other person in. So hopefully the dog has a good recall and runs back. If not, then, you know, I try to create a physical barrier, more or less. The thing is, I'm obviously a dog lover. I hope that's obvious anyway, and I wish I could meet and interact with every dog on Earth. But again, it really does come down to the setting. If there's a time and a place for dog-to-dog -dog interaction. I know that when Bree and I are on a walk together, we have a system where one of us will take care of the dog while the other keeps the off-leash dog away. So if you have a partner, that can be helpful. I mean, guys, understand, an interaction between two dogs can go so many different different ways and not all of them are positive. I feel like I've worked with enough dogs to understand that I can't be so arrogant to think that I can size up and know what a dog is thinking or feeling or what their motivations are in two seconds. And even if they're completely friendly, you don't know what my dog's going to do. I mean, my dog's gonna play with them, but another dog might not. So what about when you're pressured by someone else who has a dog, say a perfectly friendly, well-trained dog, and they insist we should have our dogs play together. And again, as I've said throughout this video, I'm all for this in a specific situation, but almost never with a dog that I've just met. I mean, I got a page of questions to ask. I need to get to know this dog before I have them interact with my dog. I mean, you think about the Moira series. I didn't think Moira and Inertia had a similar enough play style to necessarily interact during that series, right? I didn't even have them interact at all. Bree and Inertia are down there, but Moira is like really, really wound up. However, Moira since has shown she's wonderful when she interacts with other dogs. And in hindsight, I think Inertia and Moira probably would have been great friends, but I wasn't completely sure. So that was the call that I made. Think about it, even in your immediate circle with your friends and your family, it's kind of this common expectation like, oh, I've got a new dog or you've got a new dog. They should become best friends right now. If you're comfortable with this and you know your dog really well and you feel like you know the other dog very well, set up a play date, let them play. If you're pretty sure they'll be good together, but not completely sure. Remember, you can always use things like a basket muzzle on the dogs, which are a really humane way to keep them from biting each other. But look, I'm telling you, if you feel like your dog's play style does not match that dog's play style, do not hesitate to say no. Never feel obligated to have your dog interact with another dog if you're uncomfortable with it. Full stop. You're the one who's taking agency in your dog's upbringing, so don't feel like you need to succumb to pressure from strangers, friends, family, or anybody else. That's what I think, anyway. Wonder what Fuzzy thinks. Hey Fuzzy, should I let my dog play with other dogs? It'll be interesting to see what they say. Sign up and let me know what your dog thinks. Get seven days of unlimited free questions at yourfuzzy.com slash Zach. Use discount code Zach, details below. Do you know how you felt before you knew the ending of that movie? The Sixth Sense. That's how all of you right here on YouTube are if you're not following us on TikTok and Instagram. So yeah, I'm just 